The Death Angels cult was a fringe group of the Nation of Islam devoted to murdering white people, active in the 70s. The cult consisted of NOI members who were indoctrinated into believing that whites were blue-eyed devils and crafted snakes, an evil race that, according to the Nation of Islam's own beliefs, was created thousands of years ago by a black leader and scientist named Yaqob, whose purported intention was to create a race of weak people that he and his ancestors could rule in the years to come. Yaqob's doctrine, among other things, caused splits in the NOI, and Malcolm X rejected the story, while Louis Farrakhan continued to assert that it was true. Each member who killed four white children, five white women, or nine white men was awarded wings that certify his angel status. That meant, a photograph of the member was taken and two wings were drawn at the neck, in black ballpoint. The picture was then placed on a board along with portraits of other angels, and the board was displayed during group meetings. Sometimes, a photograph of the murder was requested as proof. According to Anthony Harris, in October 1973 there were at least 15 death angels in California who were displayed on the board. Indeed, the Attorney General's office had secretly compiled a list of 45 murders that had taken place throughout the state, all victims were white and all the known suspects were linked to the black Muslim movement. Nonetheless, the Death Angels group which rose to prominence between 1973 and 1974 was the one in San Francisco. Headquartered at the Black Self-Help Moving and Storage Company, on Market Street, the group mostly consisted of ex-cons with priors for property crimes, e.g. burglary, robbery, who had met and embraced Muslimism while in prison at San Quentin. The Black Self-Help was run by NOI member Thomas Manny and employed many angels. Core members included Manuel Moore, Larry Green, Jesse Lee Cooks, J.C.X. Simon, and Anthony Harris. They all attended Muhammad's Temple No. 26, on Geary Street. On October 20, 1973, Larry Green, Jesse Lee Cooks, and Anthony Harris began prowling the streets with a Dodge van, looking for white victims to abduct and kill. They stumbled upon Frank Stewart, 15, his sister Marie, 12, and Michelle Carrasco, 11. Cooks and Harris approached them with a ruse, and Cooks grabbed Michelle by the arm. Luckily enough, Frank could distract the two long enough to allow himself and the other kids to run away in opposite directions. That very night, Richard and Quita Haig, 30 and 28 respectively, were having a walk together outside their home on Chestnut Street. The trio, who had seen the couple, surrounded the two, forced them into their van at gunpoint, and tied them up. Harris socked Richard when the latter didn't keep his face down. Cooks robbed them, struck Richard with a lug wrench, and started groping Quita. When Harris started doing the same, Green pulled over in a remote dockland area, took Quita outside the van, and hacked her throat with a machete. Richard, who in the meanwhile had fallen unconscious, was similarly hacked in the face by Cooks and left for dead. After Green took Polaroids of his killing, the three set off again. Richard miraculously survived his wounds after he was taken to a hospital by a passing couple. On October 23rd, Cooks, coming back from black self-help, assaulted and raped Linda Lewinger, 27, on Waller Street. According to Clark Howard, he did not kill her because rape was despised by the Death Angels, and he was afraid they'd kick him out. Six days later, on October 29th, Cook shot repeatedly Francis Rose, a 28-year-old university student, near the University of California Extension Campus. He was caught immediately after the fact. Cooks pled guilty to first-degree murder, which cost him legal assistance from the NOI, and was sentenced to life imprisonment. Since the murder was committed with a .22 pistol, authorities didn't immediately link the attack with the other zebra killings. On November 9th, 27-year-old Pacific Gas and Electric Clerk Robert Stokeman engaged in a struggle with Leroy Doctor, 35, when the latter aimed a gun at his face on Army Street. Though he was grazed in the neck by a bullet, Stokeman gained control of the weapon and shot Doctor, who was caught hours later by police officers. Doctor, who was out on parole at the time, was convicted of assault with a deadly weapon. On November 25th, on Larkin Street, 53-year-old store owner Salim Arakat was tied up, shot execution style with a .32 caliber pistol, and robbed by J.C.X. Simon, who pulled the trigger, and Edward Land. Anthony Harris was also there as a lookout. On December 11th, Paul Roman Danzig, 26, was shot three times by Manuel Moore on Haight Street. On December 23rd, future San Francisco Mayor Art Agnos, then 35 years old, 
was shot twice in the back by Simon on Wisconsin Street but survived his wounds. That same evening, Marietta Di Girolamo, 31, was thrown into a Divisadero Street doorway and shot three times by Moore. On December 20, 81-year-old Ilario Bertuccio was repeatedly shot in the back by Moore on Bancroft Street. Shortly afterward, Teresa Di Martini, 20, survived his wounds after she was shot three times by Simon. On December 22, both Neil Moynihan, 19, and Mildred Hostler, 50, were shot down by Green on 12th Street and Gough Street respectively. On December 24, the group switched back to its old MO of abduction and hacking. They kidnapped an unidentified white man on North Point Street, brought him to black self-help, and hacked him with bladed weapons while he was alive. The remains were later disposed of by Harris, who dropped them in the San Francisco Bay. On January 28, 1974, the night of the historic Fraser Ali fight, six people were shot on the same evening. First was Tana Smith, 32, who was hit twice in the back by Simon on Gary Boulevard. On Scott Street, Vincent Valline, 69, was also hit twice in the back by Moore. On the corner of Howard and 9th Street, Harris was pressured into shooting one John Bambick, 84. 45-year-old Jane Holly was shot two times in the back by Moore while she was inside a launderette on Silver Avenue. Roxanne McMillan, 23, managed to survive his wounds but was left paralyzed from the waist down after she was shot twice by Simon on Edinburgh Street. 26-year-old hitchhiker Thomas Bates also survived his wounds after he was shot three times by either Simon or Moore in Emeryville, north of Oakland. On April 1, two Salvation Army cadets, Thomas Rainwater, 19, and Linda Story, 21, were shot twice in the back by Green. Thirteen days later, on April 14, Ward Anderson, 18, and Terry White, 15, were both shot by Green while standing in a bus stop on the corner of Hayes and Fillmore Street. Both survived. Lastly, Nelson T. Shields IV, the 23-year-old son of a wealthy DuPont executive, was shot three times in the back by Simon. The slayings threw San Francisco into a state of panic, citizens were now afraid of going out alone, especially in the evening and night hours, when most of the killings took place. Police found itself groping in the dark due to the apparent randomness of the attacks and mounted one of the largest manhunt in the city's history. A dedicated task force was created to deal with the murders, led by homicide detectives Gus Carreras and John Fotinos, who had investigated the Erica case and found out that the same gun had been used in the subsequent shootings. Dave Tashi, who had become famous for his work on the Zodiac Killer case, was also part of the team. The task force was dubbed Operation Zebra, as Police Chief Donald Scott had assigned the Z Police radio frequency for their exclusive use. The killings were consequently named the Zebra Murders. The name stuck because of the black-on-white nature of the crimes. Mayor Joseph Alioto and the SFPD faced widespread criticism when police officers began stopping and questioning black people indiscriminately, based on their resemblance to the composite sketch of the killers. Each citizen, once stopped and cleared, received a zebra check card they could show to the police if stopped again. Eventually, a federal judge, acting on a lawsuit filed by the NAACP and the ACLU, deemed the operation unconstitutional, and the program was suspended. Once a $30.000 reward was offered in exchange for information leading to the arrest of the killers, a break finally came to the case on April 22, 1974. Anthony Harris, who had recognized himself in one of the composite sketches released to the public, telephoned the Zebra Task Force hotline and accepted to implicate himself and his accomplices in the killings in exchange for protection, immunity, and the reward money. On May 1, Police raids resulted in the arrest of Manuel Moore, Larry Green, J.C.X. Simon, Thomas Manny, and three other black self-help employees, Dwight Stallings, Edgar Burton, and Clarence Jamerson. Although Manny, Stallings, Burton, and Jamerson were released because of lack of evidence, the others were all charged with conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, first-degree murder, and assault with a deadly weapon. Green and Jesse Lee Cooks, who was already serving time for the murder of Francis Rose, were also charged with kidnapping and robbery for their roles in the Hague attack. Harris, who had initially denied killing any of the victims, eventually admitted shooting John Bambick under pressure from the others. Regardless, Harris's testimony was not the only evidence investigators had against the group, a Beretta Model 70, recovered by two young boys not far from the Shields crime scene, was found to be a match with bullets from 10 of the 1974 zebra attacks. 
a fence later testified that he had sold that gun to Thomas Manny. The trial, one of the longest in American history, began on March 3, 1975, and ended on March 9, 1976, with guilty verdicts for all the defendants, despite attempts by the defense to discredit Harris as a witness. Moore, Crean, Cooks, and Simon were all sentenced to life imprisonment. Harris was given a new identity to start a new life with his family, away from San Francisco. The crimes were recounted in detail in a 1979 book by Clark Howard, Zebra. On March 12, 2015, Simon was found dead from unknown causes in his cell at San Quentin. In 2017, Moore died at the California Healthcare Facility in Stockton, aged 75. Crean is currently incarcerated at California State Prison, Solano. Cooks died on June 30, 2021. The zebra murders inspired a 2007 copycat killing perpetrated by a black Muslim in Santa Barbara. The very first attack perpetrated by the zebra killers involved the abduction of a Caucasian couple. While the woman was fondled and her throat slashed with a machete, the man was beaten, his face butchered, and he was left for dead. Switched to close-range random shootings of white people, though, on one occasion, they tied up and shot an Arab man they would approach their victims, shoot them point-blank with a .32 Beretta Model 70 semi-automatic pistol, and flee. The gun employed by Jesse Lee Cooks to shoot the very first victim of the zebra shootings was a .22 pistol. According to Anthony Harris, while the victims of the shootings were randomly selected, the locations were not, and members usually did some scouting before taking action. The group briefly reverted to its original modus operandi of abduction and attack with bladed weapons, when they kidnapped a still unidentified homeless man in his twenties, tied him up, and hacked him to death. His remains were later dropped into the San Francisco Bay. Manuel Leonard Moore Nicknamed Rims in Clark Howard's book 29 at the time of his arrest for the zebra killings. Born in Southern California, raised in San Bernardino County. Was in trouble for petty thefts from his early teens, and was either expelled or suspended from school regularly. Despite having a speech impediment, was able to reach 10th grade. Was regularly beaten by his father and eventually ran away from home. Had a long rap sheet consisting of robbery, battery, burglary, rape, drug possession, and other minor violations. Ended up in San Quentin for second-degree burglary. Was paroled after two years and three months. Was jailed once more for burglary 13 months after his release. During this one-year sentence, he met Anthony Harris and Jesse Lee Cooks and embraced Muslimism. Employed at the Black Self-Help Moving In Storage Company. Attended Death Angels meetings. Attacked 7-8, if he shot Thomas Bates, people in total. Found guilty of conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, first-degree murder, and assault with a deadly weapon. Sentenced to life imprisonment. Died in 2017, aged 75, at the California Healthcare Facility in Stockton. Larry Craig Green. Also known as Larry 9X. Nicknamed Yellow in Clark Howard's book for his complexion. 22 at the time of his arrest for the zebra killings. Born and raised in Berkeley. Came from a decent home and family. Was a high school basketball star. Dropped out of college and joined the Nation of Islam. Employed at the Black Self-Help Moving In Storage Company from 1972. Attended Death Angels meetings. Was never incarcerated before the murders. Responsible for five of the attacks, including the hacking of Quita Haig, which he captured with a Polaroid camera. Found guilty of conspiracy to commit first-degree murder first-degree murder, kidnapping, robbery, and assault with a deadly weapon. Sentenced to life imprisonment. Jesse Lee Cooks. Nicknamed Head in Clark Howard's book. 30 at the time of the guilty verdicts. Raised in East St. Louis, the older of four siblings. Was committed to the Illinois State Training School for Delinquent Boys after he attempted to smother his mother with a pillow. After his release, his family moved to Omaha, where he was enrolled in Technical Junior High School. He eventually dropped out in ninth grade. Married in 1963, at 18, and fathered four children. Later moved to Los Angeles. Briefly worked as a parking lot attendant but soon turned to robberies as a means to support his family. After he was caught robbing banks, he was relocated to several federal correctional facilities before he was paroled out. 
discovered his wife had borne two illegitimate children while he was inside. Jesse Lee Cox refused to live with her and Jesse Lee Cox moved to Omaha, New Orleans, and Chicago. Was again arrested for violating parole. Spent six months at San Quentin, where he met Anthony Harris and Manuel Moore and embraced Muslimism. After his release, in June 1973, he was employed at the Shabazz Bakery. Attended Death Angels meetings. Responsible for the rape of Linda Lewinger on October 21, 1973. Participated in the Hague attack and only personally killed one victim, Francis Rose, on October 29. Was caught immediately thereafter. Pled guilty to first-degree murder in December 1973. Sentenced to life imprisonment. The Nation of Islam refused to provide him with a defense attorney because of the deal he had struck, which was against NOI rules. Received another life imprisonment sentence in March 1976 for his role in the Hague attack. Jesse Lee Cox passed away on July 1, 2021. J.C.X. Simon Nicknamed Skullcap in Clark Howard's book Born J.C. Simon on May 5, 1945, in Opelousas, Louisiana. His family then moved to Beaumont, Texas. Was the fourth of eight siblings. His parents separated when he was ten. Worked as a busboy and attended Lincoln High School. Was accepted at Texas College in Tyler, but dropped out after three years of irregular attendance. Married and fathered a daughter in 1970. Relocated to Houston and worked as a food selector in a grocery supply store for a while. Embraced Muslimism in the 1970s. Left his wife because of his newfound faith and returned to Beaumont. Moved to San Francisco on the advice of an older fellow member of the Nation of Islam. Was arrested for possession of a stolen gun shortly after his arrival. Found employment at the Black Self-Help Moving and Storage Company in January 1971. Eventually remarried. Attended Death Angels meetings. Committed 6-7 if he shot Thomas Bates attacks in total. Found guilty of conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, first-degree murder, and assault with a deadly weapon. Was sentenced to life imprisonment. Found dead in his cell on March 12, 2015. The cause of death remains unknown. Anthony Cornelius Harris. Nicknamed Judo in Clark Howard's book. 28 when he turned himself in. Born and raised in Southern California. The eldest of a large, poor family. At 14, he was declared mentally defective and committed to an institution. Dropped out of school in ninth grade. Anthony Cornelius Harris once married a white girl and had two children. Judo expert. Served two and a half years at San Quentin for beating up a police officer in Long Beach. Was again sent to San Quentin for burglarizing a Long Beach realty company. He met Manuel Moore and Jesse Lee Cooks, embraced Muslimism, and began teaching Judo. Found employment at the Black Self-Help Moving and Storage Company in August 1973, was fired on February 1, 1974. Attended Death Angels meetings. Held a grudge against Simon because he thought him to be involved in the death of his brother, Pinky Harris, who allegedly died at the hands of Southern California Muslims. Turned himself in on April 22, 1974, and implicated his accomplices to stop a lot of senseless killing. Some argue he did it to get the reward and to get even with the Muslims. Initially denied involvement in the murders, but later admitted shooting John Bambic under pressure. Was granted immunity and witness protection. Started a new life away from San Francisco with his girlfriend, Deborah Turner, and his newborn son.